Hey, when your shrubs and for your that matter, your trees go through a stressful summer like we just had, it's important to prepare them in fall right for the winter with a little extra care. So what do you do? Well, how, do you, how does your landscape look right now? It looks okay. Yeah? Yeah, nothing. I planted I mean, a couple of trees, and they're, okay. they, they're starting to turn a little early. Oh, yeah? But it's just because we have had the driest oh, weather, I think, gosh. in the last month yeah. than we had all summer. Yeah. And that where a lot of people, when the nights get cooler and they wake up and there's, like, dew on top of their cars yeah. and, and stuff, they don't think that, it, yeah. oh, it's fine. Yeah. But we haven't had a significant rain for a while. A long time, yeah. Yeah. And and my that, Franklinia tree is dropping a lot of leaves. Yeah. 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 And, and I planted a Franklinia too. And that looks pretty good. Oh. But I planted a Zelkova and oh. it's starting to get that yellowy look. Yeah. And as we sit here in the studios in Philadelphia, we look outside and we see the city, but we're in somewhat of a, there's lots of trees in this area. And you can see where the colors are starting to change. They're not that lustrous green anymore. And if you look around your neighborhood, you're going to notice that trees are starting to turn color. And that we're going to have a segment next week that's going to talk about what causes the trees to turn color. But I can tell you what's happening with these because you can see it's almost like a tinge of yellow. Yellowish, yeah. That's Pretty the nice. dryness. And that that's the one thing you kind of be worried about. You need to supplement water. Um, it's important even on established plants. Like uh, coming up in the studios again, they have planters. Did you notice how dry the planters yeah, are? Really dry. I noticed how yeah. dry mine are at yeah, home. <laughs> My sweet potato vine oh, is yeah. uh, shriveling, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to water them extra, extra heavy just to get them to perk back up and to get all the flowers back uh, back flowering because. Again, just because it's uh, it's going to be the the fall, they still need to get supplemental water. I mean, it's going to be 85 degrees in the fall. So not for long. Let's hope we get those 70-degree days and those 55-degree nights. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> but here's one thing to do to your landscape shrubs. And this is good for all evergreen shrubs, all types of Um, rhododendrons, azaleas, all different types of of landscape shrubs. Put down hollytone and feed them hollytone. It's it's by Espoma. Espoma hollytone is a granular fertilizer, 100% organic. Uh, It contains uh, mycorrhiza, which is going to be make sure that the elements in the soil can, can help that fertilizer to work into the plant. And hollytone on all of your trees and shrubs. Um, there is tree tone, by the way, with tree tone if for just like shade trees and, and flowering trees. But honestly, hollytone is something that has a little bit of something that will be a little more acidic. Like all of your Japanese maples, dogwoods, they will absolutely love hollytone. But don't skimp. Don't not do it. You do it now and then you do it in the spring. So you're going to do it in March. Uh, really, the end of March would be the best time. And it's going to work to help your plant's root system to grow. Another thing, what about mulching, Julio? Yeah, make sure you have mulch down uh, at least two to three inches. Right. Okay. So you're going to replenish. Yeah. You're going to replenish that. That you, If you did it in the spring or if you didn't, you know, now's the time. Yeah. And, and again, even if you did it in the spring, it's going to be compacted. It's not going to be, it's a lot of it rots away. Um, speaking of rotting mulch, <laughs> rotting. I got a picture from my son-in-law, Steve. Hey, Steve, you listening? <laughs> You've been killing it on your lawn. Um, he's been doing a lot of work on his yard. Oh, yeah. Nice. And... Uh, he came out and looked at his mulch bed, and there is what he thought was dog throw up. Uh-huh. <laughs> his, and it, it's actually a type of mushroom, if you will, uh, that it looks like vomit. Yeah. Seen Doesn't that, that sound nice? Yeah, it's real nice. <laughs> you know, we don't have to give him more. This is yeah. radio or podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> again, <laughs> it is one of those things where it is a natural occurring thing as things break down. Um, as things break down in the organic matter, it throws up this spore and that it looks like, it's like, what is it? It looks like something 
you know, again, if you've got a dog, you know what it, it looks, looks like. Yeah, it um, look like that. But uh, again, it's not something to worry about. But again, putting the mulch down adds that organic matter so that the soil, because it's the soil you don't want to dry out. You want it to stay moist, not wet. Um, and again, you don't want it to get to that critical stage to where it's, it's in a drought zone. So again, get that mulch down. Um, you need to spray a systemic insecticide on all of your plants. Now, a systemic, like we've, anybody who's listened to this show for any amount of time knows that systemic is, makes the plant poisonous to the insect. And what happens is that on all types, it could be spider mites, it could be uh, different types of lace bug. Lace bug is a, is a bane to, to the existence of azaleas and rhododendrons and Andromeda. Oh my gosh, Andromeda. That's like, you know, it's like candy to them. And that these insects make the plant so that it can't get the maximum photosynthesis out of the sun because it's sucking the life out of the leaves. So you want to spray with a systemic insecticide and just do your entire landscape plants, okay? Do all of your shrubs or in any of your perennials. This is going to, um, it, by the way, it is not organic. Sorry, folks out there. Not every time there's going to be an organic that is going to have as complete a label as the systemic. So again, you're going to want to spray them to control the lace bug so that you don't have to deal with it in the spring. And it's systemic, broad spectrum of insects, also long lasting. If you want to go organic, you've got to spray three, four, four times. times. Yeah. And if, you're, if you don't think that the, the organic insecticides are, oh, I'm going to use organic because it won't kill the bees. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. So what you need to do is spray in the the late part of the day when the bees are back inside. And I don't care whether it's organic or inorganic. Do that spray late in the day. Normally, we always tell you, it's like, oh, do it first thing in the morning. Don't, you don't want it wet. But when you're spraying, because the safety of the honeybees, you want to do it so that it's late in the day. And that's when the bees have basically gone home for the night. All right. Uh when probably about two weeks after that, you want to use what's called a dormant oil spray. And Julia, what is, what is? Can you explain to me what a dormant oil spray is? It's like a um, what it does. Is it protects the, the uh, gives like a film, right? And it protects the plant from the insects. And um, that's what it basically does. Yep, and it's organic. That is that is one that is organic. And like Holly was saying, it creates a film and, and it coats the insect and kills any adults that are on it as a contact spray. And it's one of those things that you want to make sure that you spray the leaves and under the leaves and along the trunk because there's scale. Scale is, a, is oh, an awful insect. You, some, you can't see them sometimes because they're just attached like barnacles to the trunk. And that what it will do is it will smother them and control them that way. It doesn't necessarily poison them, but it gives them that coating of that film, which will kill the insect. And that you do a combination of the, these two, because again, you have a systemic, you put the systemic on, it, it makes the plant poisonous to the insect, which lasts for a long time. But there are sometimes there are eggs where when the systemic begins to wear off that you don't know you don't realize that the eggs have hatched and now you have a whole new generation that needs to be controlled and that way you do it probably a month after do it a month after you put down the systemic maybe after like if you have deciduous shrubs like say for instance you have Oh, I don't know. Let's say spirea or you have even hydrangeas. And once those leaves all fall off, go ahead and do it then. Because then you'll get good control. And Julio, should you just leave those leaves sitting in the bed? No, you, you rake them up and get rid of them. Yep, because they could have disease, disease spores, spores in it. And that's how you have one thing. Every yeah. year I have the same yeah. thing. Yeah. The, and it's because sometimes you may be leaving those leaves there. That's right. All right. 
Here's a test for Julio. Can you name or can you tell me what an anti-transparent is? Anti-transparent means that, you know, the lead, the uh, lets, lets the uh, water go through, you know, out into the air. But this, uh, this will give it a film which stops it from, uh, from doing that. So the plant now is basically, you know, not losing water through its leaves. And right. Not drying up. Right. Um, plants like boxwood and a lot of of our broad-leafed plants that, and even evergreens, they sometimes get winter burn. And winter's cold. If we go through a dry winter with lots of wind, all the evaporation and the transpiration that comes out of that plant is not replaced. And like Julio said, that it that it's like a film. And there are brands out there called Wilt Stop is one. Wilt Proof is another and that it's a flexible film that you put on plants and it just stops them from drying out. Uh, it's great for transplanting. When you, If you're doing any planting, make sure you do it because it will help those plants' roots grow rather than all of a sudden that moisture that's supposed to be around the roots evaporates and transpirates through the leaves and they, that will help them to transplant better. Uh, it's, it's great. You, oh, yeah, it's great. And again, you want to spray it in late fall when the temperature is above freezing, folks. Okay, there are certain plants, read the label, it has to be above freezing because you can really mess up your plants if you do it below freezing. So it can be done late, but you have to apply it when the temperatures are above freezing. Especially like I have a lot of boxwoods. Yeah. And they're, you know, they sit outside and uh, where there's really a lot of wind. Every year I hit them and I have no issues at all. No issues because a lot of times we get it in, in early spring. People come in. It's like, what's going on? Because the plant will be all white. white. Yeah. And and it's basically a burn. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's something that, that it's not done enough and it can even be done uh, in almost any time of the year. Yeah. You know what I saw it for? Use scrape for? What? Coating pumpkins. Oh, yeah. Because what happens when pumpkins rot, right? They, they, they're losing or they shrivel up. That if you coat them with the wilt stop or wilt proof, that it prevents them from drying out wow. and that they, they keep their skin and they look great. Um, and even is used as a leaf shine for houseplants. Oh, yeah. So you can use it in, inside. It's got lots and lots, lots of, uses. of uses. Overlooked, underused uh, product for sure. For sure. Listen, if you've got any questions about what to do with putting your it's basically it's like your pool you know you got to close your pool you got to close your landscape you know you got to <laughs> do the same type of thing and it would only take an afternoon it's not going to take a lot of time to do it's something that's easy but uh you just need to do it you just need to do it it's something we don't think about 